Okay, so just a quick video to hopefully try and explain a little bit more about the National Grid and how it works and especially to help you answer the last question on um, your tasks that you've got for this week on how does the National Grid um, help to transfer energy more efficiently. So just taking a look at the National Grid first. So you've hopefully already gone through and you've labelled a picture very kind of similar to this. Um, where you've labelled the power station, step up transformers, high voltage transmission lines, step down transformers and the consumers. So the national grid itself is just the K a system of cables and transformers which connects suppliers of electricity to the consumers. So the important bit is it's a system of cables and transformers okay, that connects the suppliers and the power consumers. It's not the suppliers and the consumers. So if we take a look at this, if we actually look at what is the national grid, it is this bit in the middle here. So this bit here is the national grid. OK, so this is the national grid, which means the power station and the consumers are not part of the national grid. So when we are asked, explain how the national grid is designed to be as efficient as possible. We're going to start splitting this up into three sections. We're going to think, right. So we've got our step up transformer we've got our transmission lines and we've got our step down transformers okay so they're the three sections that we're working with they're the three things that we want to look at so first off the most complicated one of these by far is the step up transformers and what they do to allow electricity to be transferred efficiently um, so it's the hardest bit to understand so let's take a little bit of time to explain this so it's using the equation which you should have done in task one and uh, hopefully should have had a quick look at last week as well um is power is current times potential difference or power is current times voltage so p for power i is current v is potential difference so i've highlighted these up so that when we go through this it should hopefully make sense now the power station produces a certain amount of power okay that's fixed so let's say in this case power station produces 12 watts of power okay so just as an example now we can make that power in different ways okay we could have something like this oh not four two times six <laughs> equals 12 so we could have two amps and six volts giving us 12 watts of power or we could have four amps and three volts making again 12 watts of power so we could have high potential difference low current so that one be high potential difference low current okay or we could have the opposite way around we could have a low potential difference and high current okay so we could choose one or the other. Ooh. Now, one of these is going to be better than the other, though, in terms of making it more efficient. And that is to do with something we've discussed before. And hopefully if you um, if you got to fuse as well, you were still in school. Um, you should have seen the maybe the fuse wire demo where we showed you what happens to a wire when you put too much current through it. And you will have seen it looks something like this. OK, you put too much current through a wire. And the, wire, and the resistance of the wire starts to cause the um, wire to heat up. OK, now the reason for that, the electrons are passing through the wire, the charge is passing through the wire. And as they do, they collide with the ions. We've talked about that before as resistance. And when they do that, they lose some energy, which is given off as heat to the surroundings. So that's because the current's too high. So we want the lowest current possible. So in this case, this top one with the high potential difference and low current will be much better. So that's why we use the step up transform. Say so increase the potential difference, which means that you get a lower current. OK, so you're increasing the potential difference, causing a lower current to go through the wires. OK, so with step up transforms, this is the things you want to be kind of mentioning with this. What we do is we increase the potential difference, this decreases the current, 
So the wires don't lose as much heat as thermal energy, and that makes the uh, electricity more efficient or the transfer of electricity more efficient. Okay. Right, after that, our next steps, we go back, we've gone through the triple transformers. We're now going on to the high voltage transmission lines. So that's not much to say about these really. All we need to say is two things. They transfer electricity at high potential difference and have a low resistance. Okay. So that just means that we as we've said, we've increasing the potential difference and they transfer it at that high potential difference. So up to about 400,000 volts. It can be anything up to that. And they have a very low resistance, um, meaning that very low amounts of electricity, sorry, very low amounts of energy are lost. Okay. Um, on to the last bit then, the step down transformers. So similar to the step up transformers, they change the potential difference and they change the current but they do the opposite way around. So they actually decrease the potential difference down from that high 400-ish thousand volts, anything up to that anyway, down to 230 volts. And when they do that, that increases the current. And the reason for that is that you don't want 400,000 volts going through your home because that would be extremely dangerous. So we decrease it to 230 volts so that it makes the electricity safe to use in the home. Now, what you need to do to answer this question is put these three bits together, okay? Obviously, you don't just write these bullet points out. You want to write this as a full, this is a six mark answer. So if this, if this, take this as your plan that I've done on here for you, okay? And use this to answer the full question. So we'd start off by saying the step up transformers um, are used in the national grid to increase the potential difference which then decreases the current so that wires don't lose as much thermal energy. So you need to be linking these ideas together. Okay, you don't need to write too much, but you want to link your ideas together correctly to make it make a bit more sense. Um, and they say, therefore, this makes the uh, whole system more efficient. And then you go on to the transmission cables and explain that and link that together. They say the next part of the national grid is the transmission lines. These do this and have this. And then you go on to the last bit, which is the step up transformers, and then you might end up with saying this then transfers electricity to your home. So you go through the three parts, okay, make a few points for each. You can get most of your marks for your step up transformer if it's the most complicated, and then a couple of marks for this, and a couple of marks for this bit. So write this out properly, full sentences, six mark answers, so it needs to be a good, decent sized paragraph, okay, not a couple of bullet points. It's not going to get you six marks. Okay, hopefully this helps you.